Okay, so today what we're checking out is the HRM or the Hot Rubber Monkey, which is a dumbbell style overdrive pedal from J Rocket. And this is a great sounding little pedal. It's actually, um, you know, it's quite heavy, has a lot of kind of bulk to it, even though it's a pretty small pedal. So it definitely has a very good quality feel. The controls are pretty straightforward. You've got a level control, which is your overall volume. You've got gain, you've got top end, and you've got mid range. These are very interactive. So I'm finding as I just gain or adjust the top end and mid range levels, I've got to adjust the level pretty often to keep the volumes at where I want them. So what we're doing today is we're playing through my Neural DSP Quad Cortex. I've just got a basic preset using Amazing Boogie Lone Star into a 2x12, and then I have a little bit of delayed reverb on the end, not too much. And I'm playing a Strat style guitar. Actually, today's guitar is a Fender Aerodyne, which is one of the made in Japan models. And here's what our clean tone sounds like. <laughs> Later we'll check out the pedal using some humbuckers just to see what that sounds like. But for most of this, we're gonna stick with the single coils. So let's go ahead and engage this. I've got everything at 12 o'clock, except the levels at about uh, 10 o'clock. I find this is about unity. So again, without the pedal, with the pedal on. So you can hear that's still a little bit louder than the bass set. So good to know that the in terms of level, when you've got everything in the noon, your level is going to be over here if you, unless you want to boost the signal. I switch to the bridge pickup. So that's a pretty good sound. I think on the neck pickup, it's a little dark for my taste. So what I would probably do is maybe turn up the top end just a little bit. It's a little bit nicer and it's still pretty warm on the bridge pickup. So let's talk about the controls in general and what I'm finding. First off, I would say on the mid range, you know, my first instinct when thinking about a dumbbell saw pedal is, you know, that glorious dumbbell mid range. And so I'm like, oh, let's trend it up. I will say, as I use the pedal more, I'm liking the mid-range more in kind of this range than necessarily getting it too high. If you push it too high, and we'll check it out, it starts to get a little too much for my taste. And then the other thing I'll say is, generally, I like to keep the top end higher than whatever setting I have the mid-range at. So, for instance, if the mid-range is at 50%, I would never drop the top end down here. It gets too money. It doesn't have as much definition. If I pull the mid-range down, then maybe I might pull the top end down. But overall, I like to keep the top end a little bit more than what where the mid-range is. So let's go ahead and check out kind of the different max levels. So let's go ahead and let's drop the gain all the way down. And the most nice thing here is, and we'll need to pump the level up to compensate, but if, even if the gain's on zero, you can still use the pedal. So again, here's the clean tone. If I engage this with the gain all the way off, boost the level just a little bit. So it's still a pretty reasonable, usable sound. So you can use this kind of as a boost. Maybe you want to push 
so a little bit on the front end of the amp. I don't think it's 100% clean even with the gain all the way off, but it's a nice boost. I mean, so that's a really nice sound right there. And then if you want to add in a little bit of gain, again, we'll pull back. And one thing you'll notice when I was up here, as I turn on the gain, you're hearing more noise. mid-level kind of crunch gain kind of works for some nice in-between sounds so let's go ahead and pump up the gain a little bit so we'll bring the level down let's go to about 75 percent so you can hear with the strat especially that's a nice kind of chewy rhythm tone. But you can also hear when I switch to the neck pickup. starts to get a little muddy, and I might back the mid-range off a little bit on that. You can hear when I do that, I want to tweak the level a little bit. even in a four position. Might even give a little more. And then we crank it all the way. I mean, we're really gonna wanna lower that down a little bit. That's a little too much. So, generally, in terms of the game, I mean, I like it kind of in this range, kind of from lower through about two o'clock. I think once you get above that, it starts to get a little muddy to me. You can definitely do it. It's a nice thick sound for certain tones that you're going for, but generally I'm more kind of in the middle realm. So let's play with the top end. So let's go ahead and we'll drop it all the way down. So I'm gonna stay on the bridge pickup. You can hear that's really muffled. Turn it up. So it's still pretty muffled. And so that's what I was saying is that with the mid range at half, I really don't find much use for the top ends kind of anywhere below where the mid range is. If I drop the mid range down, I can turn it all the way down. Then the top end could be lower.
So in general, I find as long as the top end is at or above where the mid-range is, it'll work. Um, if you try to add a bunch of mid and dro drop the top end, I mean, it's not horribly bad, but it starts, there's not enough kind of dynamics there. And a similar kind of thing, if we crank the top end, it can start to get a little harsh. But if we push more mid-range, it can start to work. So in general, I find keeping these kind of together, maybe with the top end a little bit more than the mid-range, helps immensely. And so let's try out the mid-range. So here's the mid-range all the way off, and I'm on the bridge pickup. So I mean, that's a really nice tone and it's usable. If we go to about... pump it up, what I might do is also pump up the top end. sound a little bit like that Boston preset I just did. And so typically, again, I'm not pushing the mid-range that much. Um, it was my first inclination when I started playing this. was like, all right, let's really push the mid-range. And, and maybe if you were playing to an amp that was really scooped, that might make sense. But for me, again, I like it in that kind of 9 o'clock to 1 or 2 o'clock range and even maybe a little bit more, less than halfway, and then you can keep the top end down. really liking this pedal. I even uh, have tried it out um, with another kind of gain stage in front of it. So kind of using this as kind of an amp distortion and then putting a boost pedal in front of it. And it does really well with that. Um, let's try a humbucking pickup and see what that sounds like. So now I have my PRS SE Pulse guitar and I've got both pickups in humbucking mode. Here's the bridge pickup. <laughs> So maybe a little more top end there, maybe pull the mid-range back a little bit. So it works without much of a tweak. Let's go ahead and crank it and see what we can get here.
So that works pretty well. So I think this is a good versatile pedal. The humbucker six single coils. Um, you can use it from kind of a, a real low gain kind of boost thing to a really thick overdrive. There's a lot here. And if you like this kind of mid range warm dumble kind of overdrive pedal, um, I think this is a great option to kind of turn maybe like a Fender style amp into that kind of dumble tone and get some of those thick overdrive. So this definitely isn't a cheap pedal, new, they're about $200. Um, but I think if you're looking for this kind of sound, it's, it's a really versatile pedal. I think it could be a real core tone uh, in front of a rig, especially if you're using kind of a pedal platform, Fender-ish kind of amp. I think it'll work really well. I hope you found this helpful and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.